Hey guys, excuse the glasses, I have light sensitivity and so today I was trying to do this video without my glasses on and it was just too strong for my eyes. But anyway, a really sweet verse that I have held on to a lot in my life is Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 and it says, Make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have, for he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you, so that we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid, what will man do to me? And I really like um, this verse because when you think of life, you know, God says that he's with us 24-7. There's not a time that God isn't with us. And in fact, David said, that God doesn't even sleep or slumber. So the fact that God Almighty, who rules over the universe, who holds it in the span of his hand, and has all things under control, says he's, he's with us. And I find that this is becoming just a greater reality in my life because as we're living under this day-to-day -day kind of situation that we've been all kind of reduced to in this last year, we're really pressing in for God to be with us and to take care of us and show us, you know, which way to go and what, what not. And I'm always remembered back to Matthew 6 where he says, you know what, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. And what were some of those things? He was talking about like our food, our clothing, um, all the stuff that we'd, we need. And he said, you know what? Your heavenly father knows you have need of all these things. And I just want to encourage our hearts today of like, number one, God knows. God sees us and God knows what we have need of. And not only that, it's not just that our needs he provides. He, I mean, he does abundantly above what we can ask, think, or imagine. He's a blessing God. And um, I've, you know, just been blessed for God just to do even the extra things in my life, you know, that, you know, there's no complaining here with that because God has done exceedingly abundant above all I can ask or think. But God doesn't want our minds just so consternating on, you know, our daily life from food to clothing and all this stuff. He wants us to be thinking and meditating on him. And he says he's with us. And when you think of that, that Almighty God has all power to provide all things at all times, at any moment, that is what we have access to 24-7. And I just love that about the Lord because He calls us His children and not only does that, He equips us and He gifts us, not only just with the Holy Spirit, but with things that we need for today. And uh, I want to encourage you guys to go to God, to continue to, like if He was physically here, you know, Think of him as like a shepherd and just get as close to you, close to him as you can. Being right there. And how do you do this? It's really communicating with God. It's really allowing yourself to have a conversation with the Lord um, in his word to build up our faith. But also pouring out our hearts on the things that concern us. The Bible says, cast all your cares on me for I care for you. God cares for us. And what does that practically look like? You know, we have the Bible example of um, God helping David and, you know, kill Goliath. You know, we, we see him as a, in those fights. Many, many times in the Old Testament, God joins in on the battlefield. And in fact, I was watching a movie last night of how the miraculous miracles of um, Israel becoming a nation and one story that I was watching was um, the army troop. I think this was in the 1967 war, or it could have been the Yom Kippur War. Anyway, um, they found themselves in la like a landmine area, and all of a sudden, you know, they're trying to dig it out and try to find out where these landmines are. But then this gust of wind that was super strong blew all the sand like a foot deep, so they could actually see the landmines and walk around them, you know, and that was one of the testimonies of the miraculous things that God can do. God actually sent a wind that just blew out the one, the land, the, the sand for the landmines, and then it left. And so God is still doing these things today, and God is still able to do anything. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. 
So when I talk to you about God is with us wherever we go, he'll never leave us, never forsake us. I'm talking about that God that can do anything um, at any time. He's with us and we're not to be afraid because God is with us wherever we go. You know, and another thing is um, just thinking about, you know, what does that look like for us? You know, God cares about us. God wants us to talk and pour out our hearts. But he's there to provide for us like we talked about with Matthew 6. But he also, you know, wants to reveal things to his people. You know, he says that he is the keeper of the, he's the revealer of the secret things. And God has just amazing things in store for us, you know. And I want you to continue to walk closer to the Lord. Now within that, there is kind of... Um, a reminder that he's sovereign God which means is he's in control of all the things so he's the one that gives us the answers yes no or wait right so not just because you're pouring out your heart before the Lord doesn't mean you're gonna get everything that you're asking for meaning um, that sometimes the things that we want and are longing for are not within our span of time and what I mean by that is when we look at Hebrews chapter 11 because that's like segwaying up to Hebrews 13. It talks about the hallmark of the people of faith. And, um, and it also says that some of them, it said, seeing the promises afar off, did not get the promise. Okay, So there were things that the Lord had put on their heart that wasn't really for their time table. Okay? So like Abraham seeing the that his descendants would be the numbers of the sand couldn't count them or the stars in the sky it would be just so innumerable but he didn't get to see the full fulfillment of that because he just had at a hundred years old his first um, well his, it's his second son but it's the one with promise is Isaac and so he just got to see him for a time you know being a son and then getting married and then that was it so God gave him these promises but the fulfillment were for later, like in the Old Testament, the, all the promises of the Messiah coming, it didn't happen until the specific time that God wanted. And so if there's a timing thing in your life, I just want you to entrust the timing to God as well. Now this I find is very hard for me um, because there's been several situations where I have prayed my heart out for something and I didn't get the answer I wanted. <laughs> You know, I didn't get to see the healing that I prayed for for people. Um, my friends have passed away, but yet my heart was so in prayer for them and so by faith, just going, no, God, I know you can raise them from the dead. It's nothing, nothing's too hard for the Lord. He can do it. And sometimes he chooses to do it, and sometimes he chooses not to do it. And that's what I mean by God's sovereignty. And I want you to be careful here because you might have given your whole heart over for prayer and just... Um, even fasting and praying over situation to what you thought was the best end of the situation but we have to commit these answers from the Lord or in our lives to him because Father God knows best and we only see on earth side God sees all sides of everything he say he, he says his thoughts are not our thoughts his ways are not our ways they're much higher than us and so if you have been lately um, struggling because your heart is pressed into the Lord and you're close to him and you really felt God was going to deliver a situation out and it didn't happen, that doesn't mean that God is not there. It means that God is there. And sometimes the choices that are made on this earth, you know, are just eternal. They, they do reflect, you know, and sometimes you don't get what you want and sometimes you don't get everything that you've prayed for, but we have to trust the Lord with all our heart and not to lean on our own understanding. We want to figure these things out. And I want you to be careful because sometimes we're not given that understanding, but we're asked to walk by faith and trust Him in those decisions. And that's where I know the enemy comes in for me and just goes, has God said, and da da da, and how come He didn't? He has all power and He didn't do it, and da da da. And I just have to really guard my heart because your heart hurts when things don't go your way. And I have to go back to say, you know what, Father God knows, and this is the answer that has happened, and so I'm going to let it be, because God knows what's the best thing. And like I said, it's not an easy place, because you look at Hebrews chapter 11, some people were delivered from the fire, 
Some people were delivered from the lion's den and some people weren't. Some people were persecuted. Some people did, um, you know, like it says, die, died in faith. They died in faith. They still held on to their faith. They didn't lose their faith. They didn't drop their faith because things got hard. They held on to it and it said without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on earth. You guys remember that we are not of this world. As a Christian with Christ living inside us, even Jesus said, you can read it in John 17. He said, I'm not of this world. This is not that this is not it for who Jesus was. Jesus was you know, before all times, he created time and all this kind of stuff. And he says, as a child, as his children, we're not of this world either. This is not our final destination, you guys. And so if the days get worse, if there is harsher treatment for those who believe and hold on to the testimony of Jesus, I want you to stay close to God. I want. He says he never leaves us, no forsakes us. He never walks away from us. We need to be the ones that have that... Um, just that strength to stay right by his side no matter if it's hard because like um like these people with the read hebrews chapter 11 and chapter 12 i think it'll really encourage you guys especially in this day and time just to because who knows maybe you're gonna face a giant and god's gonna deliver it you know maybe you're gonna face a fire and god's gonna uh, walk right through it maybe you're gonna have a storm on the sea and god's gonna call you to walk on top of it so you know god can do anything at any time if he wants to we just have to keep in faith and hold on to our faith you know to the very end honestly even if it gets hard so guard your mind from the enemy he wants to tell us that god is horrible and mean and, and it's so not true to who god's character is he's loving and he's kind and he knows and he sees and he hears so whatever it is that's troubling you guys take it to the lord in prayer and just surrender to his will and his way because it's perfect and he says he makes all things beautiful in his time. So even evil that is determined against us, God says he'll work it together for good. Because that's our God. And that's that's just beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got encouragement. These are kind of harder sayings. It's not like the light and fluffy stuff. But it's really the, the maturing things that are going to keep you solidly close to the Lord in times of trouble. And remember, it says in the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy and pleasures by his right hand so his presence is what we need to have so spend some time with God today just talk to him you know maybe it's through worship worship him but just allow the Lord and you to communicate more and more as these days are going by so anyway I hope you guys get blessed and um, encourage one another today because uh, we have today all right God bless Bye.